All right, guys, take two. Welcome to episode 20 of The Doctor and the Dork. This is Frank here with our co-hostess, Olivia. Hi, everyone. So we uh, started our nails right off. We uh, apologize for the audio quality of the past couple of episodes. It's been hit or miss. Yeah, the- <laughs> if you remember last episode, I paused drinking. I said, hey, are you sure it's been recording? Because it looks a little soft. Uh, well, Olivia was wrong because it was recording. But, but she, she was, was not. On to she was on to something. <laughs> And that was uh, your technician here, Frankie, yours truly. The dork. Uh, had a 50-50 shot of mounting this microphone correctly and failed the 50-50. Much like every push or pull doorway I have ever walked through and immediately walked into, I have Perfect. once again lost my 50-50. Yeah. Now we're so. probably going to be extra loud this week. I'm a yeah, little nervous. Yeah, I'm backing this mic up. <laughs> um, so... We had a pretty interesting week. We have a guest coming, uh, well, a guest at the back end of this episode. It was our friend AJ. Yep, he's Uh, the one that made our intro music and our cover art. I did have to piece parts of it together, so if you notice the editing quality isn't 100%, that's because we're a low-budget production here. (laughs) Low-budget meaning $0 production, (laughs) so, you know, be kind. (laughs) Yeah, um... Yeah, we did like a 50-minute interview with him, which was not intentional, but <laughs> it was still a good interview. Yeah, so. We just had to cherry pick what parts we wanted because, you know, we try and keep it to 30, 35 minutes for you guys. We wanted to keep it entertaining for our audience. <clears throat> um, all right, so audio issue out of the way. We announced our guest, AJ. So um, our week in review or our... Uh, us just talking back and forth because we were supposed to get rid of the week in review. Yeah, it's, we're on episode 20 and nothing's happened. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm terrible. It's the week in review. I, I cave. Um, we had uh, a haunted house that we went to. Yeah, um, let's chat about it. What was it called? Scare Haven? Um, Fright Haven. Fright and it was in Stratford, Connecticut. Yeah. I would rate it a... Four out of ten. <laughs> I would also rate it four out of ten, and this is coming from somebody who gets very anxious before haunted houses. It was uh, yeah, Olivia was so scared for going the, into for this. the whole two hours that we waited in yeah. line. The- you know what? It might have been a five out of ten had we only waited twenty minutes. Of yeah, time. I'm gonna say four <laughs> out of ten. Um, it has the. I think Corona just ruined it. You know what? Let me rephrase that. I think. The, the haunted house itself, I would actually give an 8 out of 10. There was some really great artwork, some really kind of trippy illusions, but the scare factor, I'd give a 2 out of 10. Therefore, if we balance that out, we're coming at like a 4 out of 10. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I could not agree more. I thought the uh, the artwork of the, the haunted house was really good. Um, but the place was not scary in the slightest. And I am a chicken when it comes to that kind of stuff. And me and Frankie, Frankie's like suggesting we do another corn maze. I'm saying, oh, I don't need to go. We're both trying to get out of this. Yeah, we were both trying to get out of this. (laughs) Um, so needless to say, yeah, Fright Haven in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, and it was 25 bucks a person for a two hour wait for something that was done in 15 minutes. Or you could pay $60 and go to the front yeah, of the line. Yeah, you could skip the line for 60 bucks. So, so, you know, you guys choose. If you guys are rolling like that, maybe you <laughs> want to do that. Um, all right, so that was our Friday night. So that was, it was fun. We also had taco night. We did have taco With our night friends. With so the gang. That was, uh, poor AJ, our guest, did not make it to Taco Night. Poor AJ. Poor, AJ, we're going to have to have some words next time (laughs) I see you. No call, no show on Taco Night, man. I am offended. But, Sean, Jotty, Matt, Deirdre, it was fantastic having you guys over. It was a pleasure, as always. Agreed. Um, all right, so moving on to our Saturday. I'm going to talk us through this one. Well, actually, I'll let Olivia start. What am I talking about? Oh, Saturday. So most importantly, we went to help set up for Frankie's mom's B-Day. Shout out. Happy birthday tomorrow. Yes, mom. (laughs) Uh, You'll hear this tomorrow more than likely. So uh, happy 50th birthday. Wow, way to just throw her right under the bus. Oh, just throwing her on her. Mom, (laughs) you are 50 and she is kicking ass, I have to say. Wow. She does better than most 20-year-olds. Probably true. Yeah, she's double my age and, well, actually not quite, but... And I tell you what, she probably she gives me a run for my money. So <laughs> keep it up, mom. You're killing it. But my favorite part <clears throat> of setup was not setting up, and rather 
playing with Honey because Honey's the cutest pupperoo, not pupperoo. She's an old lady, but she's the <laughs> cutest doggo. <laughs> and she's all about them snuggles, all about getting them pets, all about getting them treats. A girl after my own heart. Naps and treats. Olivia is the most dog loving yet apprehensive person I know. Honey is a snuggle bug. Like she just loves to cuddle up against you. And uh, it's just funny because, you know, I sit on the couch and I call Honey over and she'll hop up on my lap. And I'm like, oh, Olivia, you do it. And she's looking at me with jealousy. And she goes, <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Well, I don't want to make Honey <laughs> do something she doesn't want to do. Honey, if, she doesn't want to cuddle with me. If treats are involved, she's in. I'm with it. So, I got you, honey. Yeah, if treats are involved, honey wants in. Yeah. All right. And Frankie kept making her try to play, and she was like, yo, I'm I'm old. I'm trying to relax. <laughs> yeah, she's not the dog she once was. She's like 10 years old now, which ain't bad for a, uh, a pit bull bulldog mix. Hmm. So she's up there in age. <laughs> but all right, now for a little, uh, not a week in review, but coming up, Next episode, we will be coming to you with Olivia's first half marathon, maybe guys. Maybe we'll be coming to you, Ooh. or maybe this will be the last podcast, because maybe I'll croak during the half yeah, maybe, marathon. Yeah, maybe you'll just <laughs> drop dead during the run, right? I think that's a slight possibility. I think Frankie mm. will be running. I will be jogging and walking, or you know what I've been thinking about that I might do? I might just run like four miles down Wait until I see you turn around and head back. And then once I know you're a good few minutes ahead, turn around. They like, can't yeah, be a guy like record time. Can you believe I ran so fast? Come in five minutes behind me. <laughs> I'm going to be like, what? Where'd you come from? <laughs> no, but, but um, <laughs> it's going to be an adventure. So that is for certain. But guys, we are T minus 10 days on Sober Thank October. Thank goodness. Your girl's craving some you know, coffee. Let, let me pull it up. Might I got the clock right here. even be less than 10 days. Let me get start? my clock. Oh seven, my goodness, guys. You hear it, guys. Seven hours and... Or, God, seven days <laughs> and 20 hours. Mm. We are getting down there. You know, I'm going to prophylactically buy some delicious coffee creamer. Friday morning, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to drive to Starbucks, I'm going to get the biggest pumpkin spice latte <laughs> they serve, and I'm going to chug it. Oh. <laughs> well, I have this set to Thursday afternoon. Wow. So right after our last session of hot yoga. Yeah, there's a there's a brewery near there, and I think we might try to hit up the brewery after Sweaty and all. One. We'll have it's to give you a great. review on, on how that brewery is. Um, But yeah, so we are winding down Sober October. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. But we'll bring that up next episode. All right, moving on. Do you want to do your No, nope, you can go first. All right. So I've actually got a few different things, guys. Um, I am certainly not an expert in any of these topics, but I think they are worth a read if you guys get time. Because this pulls away from uh, the current coronavirus election shenanigans that I'm pretty sure we're all tired of seeing, thinking about, and talking about. And I did, I'm tired of Why are you of them. talking about it? I've had it with you and your, <laughs> your shenanigans. Um, all right, guys. So to kick us off, we have the Google antitrust suit. If you guys remember, those that are 30 and younger probably won't. But in the late 90s, um, Microsoft was hit with an antitrust suit from the government because they were considered to be a monopoly. And they ended up winning the suit, didn't have to split the com company up. Um now, before you go farther with that, let me ask a question. Yes. How is it Microsoft's fault that they were just too good and nobody else could be a competitor? Because, well, here's the thing, is if they catch you, if you're just so much better than everyone else, that's yeah. one thing. Okay. But, um, like, Amazon is starting to come to the limelight for doing this. If mm. you use your size and your business model to not necessarily be better, but to bully your competition out. Mm. So, like, if... You see someone makes a product that's doing really well and you just mimic it. And because mm -hmm. you're a bigger business, you have trade routes already yeah, and you can produce it for a quarter of the cost gotcha. and you undercut them and yeah. put them out of business. That's considered dirty and that's not really but part Microsoft of the free market. Microsoft won it meaning like they were found not to be an antitrust. Exactly. Exa okay. Well, they they were proven not to be a monopoly. Oh, okay. Basically, they, they proved that there was room for competition. Oh, okay. That they weren't just slow, solely and beating up everyone. And then pretty soon everyone. after that, I bet Apple came along. Well, exactly. You had Apple, you had Google, you had Samsung. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of large businesses okay. that came around. Um, so, 
Now moving into, I mean, Facebook came sure. out of nowhere, my, MySpace. So anyway. MySpace, shout out Tom. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> friend. <laughs> um, so going back into this, Google is being hit with this uh, lawsuit from the, the feds, um, you know, claiming that they are uh, a monopoly. And the reason they're a monopoly is because not only are they a web provider, they have a game store, they have a phone service. Um, basically, they're, they're just, they're kind of into everything. But truthfully, I'm surprised Amazon hasn't fallen into this trap I'm surprised as well. Facebook hasn't fallen into this. Well, Facebook isn't doing games and cell yeah, they phones. they do. They have games. They have they, cell phones. They have yeah. stupid Facebook games. They don't have, you know, actual game games. Oh, Google's gosh. involved in a lot more yeah. than just that. Facebook has kept their shenanigans in their realm of expertise. But I mean, expertise. you don't gotta go to Google. You can go to Yahoo. You can. Usually through Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, but keep your eyes out for that. The Microsoft suit ended up lasting roughly six years. Wow. Hopefully, uh, this Google one does not take that it's long. It's definitely going to take long. It's going to take that long. <laughs> all right, next, I got to speed this up. That's um, all right. We have the Osiris Rex. It is a NASA satellite that, as of today, yeah. at roughly 6 p.m., so we don't have the results yet. Um, it was uh, attempting to land on an asteroid roughly 200 million miles away from Earth to collect samples and bring them back to Earth. You know what? This reminds me. I read, or yeah, I think I read it somewhere. That So everybody's got all these satellites, nonsense, just in my opinion, You're ridiculous You're talking about the stuff. collision theory? No, I'm t it wasn't a theory. Two things, two of these satellites, they called it like space garbage or something. Yeah, I think. it's They left collided with each yeah. other. And what happened to... Maybe so we shouldn't just be sending ridiculous things up into space and <laughs> no, expecting no, no. good things to come from So it. those are like the booster pods coming off of the space jet. Um, the, the I just could, to tell you the truth, I could not care less what's on the asteroid. Well, if NASA we're gonna do cares. something, fine. Let's look at Mars. <laughs> if we need a backup planet, whatever. However, the yeah. asteroids flying around, what? Who cares? Well, they're trying to get. Convince me to care. I guess. I'm gonna convince all you. Right, all right. Ready. So they are looking to determine. They're they're using this in hopes that uh, they'll get a fun, better fundamental understanding of how the universe came to be, because this asteroid came from outside of our. Uh, you know what that sounds Milky like. Way. People did a lot of drugs. They were like, yeah, what if we if we get some sample from that asteroid? Maybe <laughs> we can figure out how the world started. Like all the stoners at and NASA. And everybody went around in the circle and they're like, yeah, yeah dude. We think this is like a, uh, a That 70s <laughs> yeah, Show Yeah, and they're going around in the circle. That's exactly how I see it going. All right, next. Uh, keeping it up with uh, the cutting edge tech, all right? So keep your eyes out. There might be a uh, an asteroid sample coming our way. Or there Next. might be a huge crash that ends up, we end up causing our own detonation. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so there is a, a new uh, development in nuclear technology. They are looking to start doing molten salt reactors. Um, basically, they are superheating, they're turning salt into molten salt, like, I guess, lava. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand it, guys. It was a fairly interesting article. But I'd be lying if I said I understood a quarter of it. So you, you're not going to give us the source of where no. you read the circle? No. You're not going to even say anything besides three of the words? That no, that's it. That's all you're getting is three words. Quality molten reporting here salt on the reactors. <laughs> <laughs> No, so uh, the molten salt reactors are supposed to give uh, better fusion. Um, they're supposed to be less radioactive. Is this the thing you told me it can function in like above? No, degrees? no. Oh. Uh, that was a uh, that was something else entirely. Okay. Just kidding, guys. Way to go, babe. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, keeping up with uh, the Kardashians. reactors, not the Kardashians, <laughs> um, I was reading into, once again, Elon Musk. Yeah, obviously. And he had some uh, talking points about the sun this week. And he is convinced that we need to harness the sun as our next energy source. And we're talking solar panels, but on a much bigger scale here. Hmm. Um, the reason being is I've never even heard of this measurement, but apparently the sun puts out 385 yada watts. Yada. You guys heard me right. Yada. Y-O-T-T-A. That'd be a great name for a podcast. Yada watts. Yeah. Yeah, if you're like an electric electrician and you want to have your own podcast. Yeah, into the, just really into the, like, uh, the tech industry. Yeah. Yeah, Stop giving away cool. good ideas. We got to coin that. <laughs> um, but if you're curious what 385 yada watts is, 
it's 3.85 times 10 to the 26th power for watts. watts. Hmm. Um, so if you're good with math, I guess figure that out. Now, after about 92 million miles, uh, about only two thirds of that makes it to Earth. Hmm. So that's still a pretty good chunk. So I'd say so, like one times ten to the twenty-sixth power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so still oh, a ton thirds. of power. Yeah, and over uh, two. They he was also saying that if we made a solar farm roughly the size of Texas, which I know what you're saying, Texas is a big state. Um, it could power not just the U.S., but the entire planet. Wow. Sounds like a small sacrifice. I'm just saying, you know, bulldoze Texas. California. I mean, what? Who, who needs New Mexico, right? Well, we don't even need Texas. Nevada. There's got to be a smaller state we can bulldoze and just yeah, buy the I mean, US. There, there, there's some, uh, there, there's some, there's a whole lot of empty land there. Yeah. Uh, Texas, Arizona, Nevada area. Mm. Yeah, we, we got a bunch of empty areas. We, we could sacrifice it. You know? We'll see. Um, other than that, I just have a PS5 update. Um, we are coming up on the November uh, 11th uh, release. Um, there's another round of pre-orders coming out. The game pre-orders are starting, guys. Um, you are already able to find the controllers for sale on certain sites. Um, so yeah, the PS5 is here. Uh, the Xbox Series X, um, that is on the way, guys. I think that's November 20th it was slotted for. I truthfully have not kept up with it because I'm just not interested in it. You got me. Though I should be. They did buy out Obsidian, so we can expect Fallout New Vegas 2. All right. <laughs> All right, take it away, Doc. <laughs> Time for the doctor segment. So, like Frankie said, everybody's sick about hearing coronavirus, but I'm, I'm here to do that. So, sorry, plug your ears for the next three minutes if that's what you need to do. Because I would like to give you a vaccine update. I wish I had a little like background music that played during that. Anywho, uh, nah. <laughs> so if you remember last week, I said that Johnson & Johnson had some mystery illness that was causing them to pause their phase three trials, which they basically just started. Um, now they're getting a lot of heat because they aren't actually telling people what this mystery illness is, which I do find very interesting that I find it interesting that one, they aren't telling anybody, and two, that it hasn't slipped out in some way of what it is. I'm so telling you, it's coronavirus. It must be very <laughs> bad, is all I can think of. Uh, number two, I heard that AstraZeneca is <clears throat> likely restarting its trials in the U.S. very soon, and that was after they had their adverse event of that transverse myelitis. And most importantly, and probably most relevant, because unfortunately neither of those two are probably going to end up reaching the end of their trials before Pfizer finishes their trial, is that Pfizer is considering applying for the emergency use authorization through the FDA. What is the emergency use authorization? Um, basically, this requires that a pharmaceutical company has at least half of its um, participants registered and has at least two months of safety information collected for, in this case, the vaccine. Um, so since they're just about at that point, I think they're going to seek that application. So ironically, we gave like Russia a lot of crap for not finishing their trials and um, We're still the having the thing. vaccine. <laughs> yeah, we have like a more like structured way in which we would go about it. But all in all, what that would mean is that phase three trial would only be halfway done and that they'd continue monitoring it over time, but they haven't completely finished it. Um, I was interested in like what other <clears throat> emergency use authorizations have been done in the past, and I couldn't find anything interesting. Most of them were coronavirus related, so like the hydroxychloroquine, the remdesivir, which ironically, neither of them ended up being very helpful. Um, <laughs> I have a quick doctor thing for you yeah. about the EU. Yeah. So the EU is doing what I would consider the coolest thing ever. Let's hear it. Coronavirus. Um, is starting early spring, late summer, or, or late um, winter next year, they're going to start doing challenge tests, um, which Meaning. I had never heard of this before. Where they're gonna take volunteers and inject expose them, with, them to the virus. and they're gonna expose them to. They're, so they're gonna give them the vaccine and then give them coronavirus and see if it works. That's pretty bold. And the guy on NPR was like, "Well, what if they get coronavirus?" And I was like, "That's. I mean, 
they're getting the vaccine. So one, the vaccine failed, and two, they volunteered. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure just they saying this is some waivers. I mean, I don't mean to sound crazy here, but this sounds like a willing group of participants sacrificing their health for the greater good of the many. Yeah, I mean, I would I mean, say why a couple this... things about that. One, Europe, Europe, Europe in general, even their guidelines and their science is usually much more progressive. They aren't afraid to, like, as soon as a new study comes out, they're making efforts to update their guidelines and guidance for the people. So it doesn't surprise me that they are maybe taking a surprisingly a big, big leap. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I like it. Yeah, I don't know. I, the I don't US know why. We tend to take a more conservative approach. I was like, the U.S. would balk at the very. <laughs> idea. I mean, I'm sure we have people who would volunteer too. Yeah, and but they would never. I mean, the lawsuits. But it'll be they would never. Interesting to see those those studies. Um, I also find it interesting that they're planning that, even though they don't even have the vaccine available yet. No, not yet. <laughs> um, I also saw something about um, there. What's the big uh, medical? Oh, God, um, it, it's a fr- it's like a giant uh, medical company, yeah. or not even a medical. It's like an it's association. Like a good, yeah, it's like a goodwill okay. um, thing, and they're oh, like uh, Doctors Without Borders, that kind of thing. <sighs> All right, it's I don't know. Yourself. It's a big corporation, but they're they're already setting up uh, the ability to transport the um, the vaccine. I cannot think uh, of I, the I, company. It it's something you would I donate H-C-D-C? to. No, no, it, it's no nothing like that. It, it it's a commercial company, but they're more of like a, a volunteer type deal. Mm. We, you would donate to them, okay? Like you know how you used to get like Make the Penny a Wish Foundation, yeah, something like that. I my God, I can't think of it. All right. Well, anyways, guys, that's that. So we'll have to see what happens with Pfizer. Before Corona, the last thing that had this um, emergency <clears throat> use authorization was a swine flu diagnostic test. So. Gives you an idea how often things are used for that. Um, I read an interesting article today, moving out of the coronavirus series, that they came up with a new drug to help desensitize peanut allergies. I, I don't know. Like, it's called porphorzia, palforzia. It's essentially peanut flour. It's peanut dust, guys. In a capsule. Um, you take it every day, titrate up, and then take it every day. Um, but basically, from my understanding, it's for patients who have a very severe peanut allergy where even, like, the smallest exposure would cause them, essentially, to go into anaphylaxis. Um, so that seems to be the only use. Wait, what's that? Anaphylaxis. Yeah. Um, it's like, like, you know, if you get stung by a bee and you're allergic to bees, and basically, like, your throat closes, your so what, EpiPen pressure drops. Time. Yeah, EpiPen time. So does the EpiPen work for the peanut butter allergy and the bee allergy? Yeah, so basically EpiPen just like <clears throat> stimulates your body to release everything to go into its kind of like... Fight or flight mode. Option, yeah. Operation. Yeah. Do something. Boost, oh. boost your blood pressure up. Tries to open your airways. Like it's giving you everything you can do. Oh. How long does that last for, typically? Um, that's a great question. Not very long. You Just go a in, few seconds, right? Yeah, if you're going to use your EpiPen, it's not like naloxone or Narcan. It's, you're going to give it, but then you're probably going to want to get to the, the hospital as soon as you <laughs> After get After you get done sprinting a mile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they will do some follow-up care there. Um, but that's all I have. I think next week I'm going to talk about the new drug that was approved for Ebola called Inmazenib. Uh, Maza, whatever, I'll figure out how to say it next week. And then I saw some new um, guidelines for heart failure. And since I've been out of the clinical setting for a year now, I haven't been staying too up to date on my guidelines. But I read that they had updated it or somebody stated they should use quadruple therapy, which seems a little bit bananas. But I'm going to look into it and tell you guys. Quadruple therapy for what? Meaning you need to be on four drugs for heart failure. That's I'm insanity. sure it's a very extreme case, but the headline caught my attention. Hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, enjoy our interview with our good friend AJ. Yeah, this will be a longer episode, probably like 40 minutes. So, But uh, we hope you enjoy and uh, give us some feedback at... Um, DrAndDorkGmail.com. Go follow us on Instagram. Go leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, that's um, it. Um and oh and on spotify and on we always spotify. forget about spotify because i don't think you can review things on spotify no but you can listen to it eight million times that you can do repeat get out there guys all, all right, right talk to you later later everybody Bye.
And we have a special guest today, AJ. Howdy. So, uh, wow, that was weird, AJ. Shut up. Howdy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're just going to, uh, I guess we're just kind of going off the top of our heads this episode, Can guys. Can you tell? It's been very polished. Yeah, we're very so unstructured this week, guys. But, yeah, we're just going to uh, shoot the shit for a while with our friend AJ here. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy it, all right? All so, right. AJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Wow, that's so vague. <laughs> what would you like me to tell you? What would you like me to tell our listeners? I would like Brian? you to start from where it all began. I guess, what, like age five? February 2nd, 1993. <laughs> it was a cold <laughs> winter morning. <clears throat> um, sure. So, uh, I mean, you guys know me fairly well. But for those of you who don't know me, um, you've probably heard, definitely heard my music. Uh, I made the uh, intro and outro for the Doctor and Dork podcast. That is true. Um, I also that. made the artwork for the Doctor and Dork podcast. Um, yes. I went to college for graphic design. I've been uh, invested in music and playing guitar for about 14 years. Um I don't know if it really shows, but, uh, <laughs> but I do that. Um, I just began, uh, working as a carpenter, uh, a few months ago. So I have that under my belt, so to speak. Um, yes, we definitely have peer pressured you into the trades. Uh, you yeah. used to be a teacher and now you have joined the dark side of the fo- workforce. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my favorite joke about that is, uh, we have the four tradesmen of the apocalypse but we're all, well, three of you are in the same trade. <laughs> so instead of it being one of each of the, you know, uh, one of each of the uh, different war horses, it's like pestilence, 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 and then like famine or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, we really do have three HVAC techs in the friend group. Yeah, you do. There's well, we're not no even diversity. A, yeah, we're not even all officially HVAC <clears throat> techs either. HVAC control techs. I'm not even the coolest us. one. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, At but, least you're original as a carpenter, though. That is true. I, so. Dude, I love carpentry. It's so much fun. <laughs> I say that now, in a year, it's probably going to be like, I hate you this You say so that much. as you have a broken finger currently. Oh, well, you just yeah. have to get into a new trade, then. Yeah, you my... could be the three other trades. <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. I yeah, got there you go. so many other options. Why don't you pick trades? up the other two trades for us? <laughs> get some electrical and plumbing under yeah, your belt. And... Break my other fingers at those <laughs> trades, too. <laughs> Well, when are you going to release your debut album to get out of the working for the rest of your life? Yeah. Olivia, great question. Thank you. So, <laughs> uh, that's something I have been working on and off on uh, for a while. Not necessarily an album, but every once in a while when I feel inspired, mm-hmm. I will open up uh, my computer and I'll pull out, you know, some, most of the time it's a guitar, but, you know, sometimes I'll pull in... Uh, other instruments or different backing tracks or something and whenever i feel inspired i will put something out or i will try to record something or write something down and then save it in the jumbled library that is my computer all right you know i kind of want to go into some of your art dude okay because i really appreciate your uh your cover art but i do know if i can interrupt you i do uh what you got well, I have been looking through some of my uh, artwork that I've kept from college, mm. and I would like to uh, bequeath some of it to you guys if you would like it. Yeah. Awesome. It's I was going to say. It's a little abstract and blase. Have you ever had one of your arts hanging in a gallery or sold it anywhere? Actually, yes. Or when I was in, shop? So when I was in high school, um, we were trying to decide where we wanted to go for college, what we wanted to go for. And so there was this lady in Norwich who had this art gallery, <clears throat> and she... So initially what I wanted to go to college for was art therapy. That didn't pan out. What I ended up uh, majoring in after that was computer graphics and digital design. So that's what my uh, bachelor's is. Um, but at the time, I wanted to go for art therapy. And so uh, I had to do kind of like an internship before I could graduate. So I had to do X amount of hours. What ended up happening was I brought all of this artwork there uh, to this lady, and she stole all of my artwork and closed her shop. And I remember what? trying to contact her for, I believe it was weeks. I had myself, my mother, my father, uh, my sister trying to contact her, and she just jumped ship. But I guess she did this with a few other people. Wow. So 
Like, there were some, I mean, they weren't great. I was in high school. But there are some pieces that I thought were really cool. you spent time on it. I spent a hell of a lot of time. That was my favorite thing. I loved making art. Yeah. And so, um, uh, I was, yeah, I done it. (laughs) So, yeah, so, so that was just one, one thing. It kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. But, um, in high school, I, uh, had a couple, uh, pieces of art in the hygienic art gallery that's in New London. Um, at Springfield, I had a few pieces that were up for different installations, whether it was uh, student work or, um, you know, something for, let's say, the graphic design class or something from the, um, you know, painting class or whatever, you know, whatever it might yeah. be. Um, and then at the end of the at the end of the year, when we had our uh, graduation, we had to make our own. Um, oh, my God, what was the word? Collage. Yeah, collage. We had to make our own collage. <laughs> and then you know, my macaroni art. <laughs> no, uh, it was like a. Paint. It was like our our own Culmination. exhibition, pretty oh, much. Okay. So, like, I our own series. That was, that All was right. the word. So I think we're gonna switch gears a little bit here, and what I really want to hear is some of AJ's accents. Now that I'm on the spot, they're gonna be <laughs> horrid. But sure, let's do it. Okay, hang on. I gotta. Can I have think my of... leprechaun back? By you, the way, come on. This only is my you're... leprechaun. Oh, if you're willing to start off with an Irish accent. <laughs> if I may. No, that that one was bad. <laughs> all right, listeners, I want you all to come up with a wonderful name for our <laughs> leprechaun. He's about an inch and a half tall, and he's standing on a shamrock. Please come up with a name for him. What about Patrick? That no. is so on the nose, I'm not even going to acknowledge it. Oh, my God. All right, <laughs> listeners. So, seriously, we have a little leprechaun that hides out in Olivia Yeah, that Olivia would probably be house. funny if they didn't know, but, yeah, they should know the, the backstory. Yeah, they, they need the backstory. So, he's a little green leprechaun that we play hide he's like elf on the shelf except he's a leprechaun that gets relocated every time somebody finds him now there's no point to the game other than it's just hilarious finding a little green leprechaun in random places around the house and you think he's just teleporting around so at times it is kind of creepy because like you wake up for the bathroom in the middle of the night and there's a leprechaun looking at you and you're like when did he get there <laughs> but uh if you guys could write in as aj has previously said with a great leprechaun name. That would be fantastic. Dr. and Dork at gmail.com. I will be rating all of the names, so. Olivia, are you beware. just here for the plug? Is that you? Yeah, all, that's, that's it for the podcast. Yeah, I just listen. I perk up and listen when it's just to plug something. <laughs> all right, so what other accents you got for AJ? Um, I don't know. He's been doing the Irish one lately, so you I You did the that one. one what mind. was that one you were doing when you came in earlier? Dude, I do so many different accents. What about a western one, like an old western cowboy? You got one of those in stock? You want the old western cowboy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> uh, why don't you say, put your hands up and give me all your money? Put your hands up and give me all your money. That's pretty good. You're gonna scare your grandmother with this. Yeah. Why? I mean, she's gonna be like, "Huh? Oh, wow. Sorry, Olivia's grandma." So I might be like, "How many people did you have on that podcast?" Yeah. Good heavens, you've got <laughs> so many people on the podcast. That's I don't know why your grandma. That's, you. that's that voice. <laughs> yeah, I thought I that was the uh, Irish woman. That's uh, not Irish what is at that? all. Scottish, <laughs> Yiddish. That is not Irish at all. Oh yeah. my God, we are screaming on the podcast. Oh, right sorry. Now. Guys, That's no okay. all that mic break. <laughs> all right, what was that just now? That Yiddish. Was, that, Please Yiddish, go back to it. Yiddish is it's not, <laughs> not a, Yiddish. Yiddish is not an accent. First oh off, my God. I was, uh, Yiddish is like gypsy. Oh, is that true? Yiddish is not gypsy. Are <laughs> what you is Yiddish? Me? Gyp- oh my God, dude, gypsy. You're breaking my heart with this. Did you know when you say that somebody gypped you, it's offensive to gypsies? Oh. Well, I feel gypped. I thought that was like J-I-P-P-E-D. Yeah, that is it, but I read somewhere that it refers to like a gypsy, how they used to steal from Uh, people. Well, if they weren't always stealing from people, this sounds like a gypsy problem. (laughs) I feel gypped. Dang it. Whatever. Sorry, gypsy audience. Yeah, that was a... Like, <laughs> that was Jewish, but probably a, a not PC Jewish. <laughs> oh. It was like a... Like a <laughs> you like sound, a, you know, you sound like I'm the Rugrats, like the old Jewish grandparents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please do that. Oh, my God. What were their names? Like Harold, maybe? And Kumar? Probably, like 
babushka or something. <laughs> it was something like that. Well, part of it was I watched uh, The Golem last night, which if you guys... Olivia, I know you haven't. <laughs> uh, but Frank, I don't know if you've ever seen The Golem. Plugging The Golem, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like so the so the premise of the premise of any wait is this a horror movie it is a a, a horror movie Ah, i would not have seen it it's on the netflix (laughs) Uh, dude it's wonderful are you doing a yiddish accent now too what i had no accent i had not seen it (laughs) should i (laughs) that was (laughs) not to see should i plug the movie as in i'm gonna do the description of the golem okay we're ready (laughs) <laughs> we can't. were not ready, guys. We were, in fact, not ready. Oh, yeah, we were, do all AJ thought accent? he was ready, but... I was ready. All right, so all the, in accent. The whole premise of the golem is it is about... <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't Come on, you can't do it unless you're in accent. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. You all have right. to do it in an accent. All right. So the golem is based off of the Hebrew legend of the rabbi... Who all he wants to do is protect his village. And so he comes up with a man made of clay that comes from the Hebrew book of the Kabbalah. And they take the Kabbalah and they make a man out of unplowed virgin soil. And they make the <laughs> they make the man out of it. I don't know, pretty much pretty much they j- they write letters on his forehead and uh you and he know comes they, to life. And he comes to life and he's like the protector of the the village. And he starts curb stomping people in horror fashion. Yes, but the whole premise of having the golem it's it's basically like uh if you've heard of the the necronomicon or anything. It's like yes. it's like Hebrew black magic essentially. Oh, okay. So it's like uh you know, this thing can happen for a price all right guys i guess we'll wrap up the podcast for the day we'll see oh, you on episode 21 coming, folks AJ. We, you're a great guest why thank you guys thank I'm you sorry AJ. i talked the entire time okay. no problem bud <laughs> all right later. see you guys later bye